Hello everyone. So in today's video, we are going to go over how you can use a virtual mixing board uh, such as voice meter to either enhance the sound quality of your microphone or uh, to have a better control over various sources of sound. So uh, let's just say you have multiple microphones uh, connected to your computer that you want to sort of channel to your, uh, your DAW, your digital audio workstation for recording. Uh, having this virtual mixer is going to assist you in doing that. In addition to that, let's just say you're a streamer and you want to sort of uh, direct these various sound sources to your YouTube or maybe to your Twitch gaming platform, uh, you can do that using a virtual mixer. Now, one of the reasons why I enjoy using voice meter is because A, it's very accessible, so it is free. However, the creator does encourage you to make a donation if you are in a position to do so. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is voice meter has a pretty straightforward uh, user interface. So. These are the different things that we are going to cover in this video. So without further ado, uh, let's get into this how to video using voice meter. All right. So for this part of the video, uh, we are going to be covering the basic functionalities of voice meter. So if you would like to follow along, I'm going to leave a link down below so that you can visit the website um, to download the software free of charge. But like I mentioned, um, if you want to leave a donation for the creator, then you are more than welcome to do so. All right, so uh, one of the best ways to understand how a virtual mixer works uh, is to have a grasp of how a physical mixer works because they function in a fairly similar fashion. So I think the best way to, to go about this is to uh, separate the table into two sections. Um, so uh, all of the inputs here and then the output. So starting off with the hardware inputs, you can see that there are two of them. Uh, the hardware input is going to be um, anything that is physical that is connected to your computer. So in my case, I have a USB microphone uh, that is selected and uh, you have the option to select what, whatever other physical device might be connected to your computer. So here's my microphone. And if you add, let's just say maybe a secondary microphone that you wanted to put into hardware input two, then you can also do that as well. Um, so here, the virtual input, um, I like to think of it as a software. So you have a hardware input and then you have a virtual or software input. So basically what this is, this is going to capture any type of uh, background sound that is playing on your computer. So uh, let's just say you have Spotify playing or maybe something playing on your browser. Uh, this will capture that sound and it will send it as an input going into the mixer. So you can have two physical inputs and then a virtual input. And just to give you a quick example, I'm going to open up my browser here and play some um, music. So you can see that um, the music here is playing. And if I wanted to actually take my microphone and speak into it, you'll also be able to hear it. Testing, testing, one, two, three. So you can see that the music is playing and uh, my microphone is connected here. So this is just a quick uh, sort of run through of how the various inputs work and how this gives you the uh, control um, over your various sound sources. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pause the music for now. Okay. So uh, moving over uh, to the hardware output. So this is going to be uh, very similar to the input in a way. So you have the physical output and then you have a virtual output. Uh, the physical output is going to be any sort of device uh, that you can listen to sound on your computer. So if you have speakers connected or in my case, headphones, you'll simply go into the hardware out and then select the device that is connected. In my case, my headphones are connected to uh, the Realtek R uh, audio port that is on my computer. And uh, this sort of slider is going to control how loud um, the audio uh, is being sent uh, to the hardware output. 
And very similar to the hardware output, you have a virtual output uh, where you can send sound uh, to another software. So here you're sending it to a physical device and here you're sending it to a software. For example, right now I am recording on OBS, as you can see here, and you can tell that it's picking up some sound. And the reason for this is because my USB microphone is connected um, to uh, the first hardware input here. And then uh, using this B selector, it is routing it to the uh, virtual B output. And this is sending it to OBS and it's picking up the sound here. So it makes logical sense. So uh, just looking at this, let's just say um, if I wanted to turn this off or stop the, this hardware input from sending a signal to the physical um, output, which is my headphones, I would simply deselect it. And right now, you can still hear me, but I can't hear myself uh, in the headphones because uh, the A isn't selected here. So I'm not able to hear uh, through the physical output. And likewise, if I wanted to cancel uh, this hardware input from sending sound to the B, the virtual output, I would just deselect it, but then you wouldn't be able to hear um, anything coming from this microphone. Okay, so you can see how that works. And this is a very similar case to the hardware input two as well. Um, also for the virtual input uh, also. So just to give you another quick example, let me just uh, speak into the USB microphone once again. And let me just play some music. Okay, so you can hear that music playing. Right now I can hear this music in my headphones as well because the A is selected, so the uh, physical output. And you can also hear this music as well because the B here is also selected underneath virtual input. And it's once again sending that music uh, through the virtual output going into um, the uh, OBS here. And I can also play with the sliders, maybe increase the volume for music or increase my microphone. But you can see if I go too high, it will start to peak. So uh, you want to make sure that all of your levels uh, are in the green area. So um, we're also going to move on to uh, this portion as well. So I had mentioned before that you have the option to also manipulate the sound. Um, of any of your inputs. And what I meant by that is that um, right here, you'll see that there is uh, sort of an effect panel or an EQ panel here. So uh, let's just say you wanted to add a little bit more highs or treble to your microphone. You would simply take this little square and slide it to the uh, high sector. So it's gonna give it a little bit more treble. And conversely, if you wanted to have a little bit more lows or bass, you would simply slide it over to the left-hand side. And as you can tell, it sounds a lot more bassy. And if you want it to go a little bit higher, it'll give it a little bit more echo. And to go back to a neutral position, you would simply double click it. And then you are back at the initial position. And uh, based on where you move this square, in this plane, uh, you can have a combination of echo, lows, and also highs. So if I wanted to, let's say, have some lows with a little bit of echo, you can do that. And if you want to have some highs with a little bit of echo, you can also do that as well. Now over here, you'll have a selector for audibility. Essentially what this feature does, it uh, tries to cancel out any type of background noise. Um, so for example, if I were to start clapping, I'm sure that you can hear that in the microphone. And as soon as I sort of increase this, you can probably hear my voice, but a lot less of the clapping. 
Now, uh, this feature doesn't work 100% well uh, based on my test, so um, I do highly recommend um, doing some editing in your DAW, your digital audio workstation, um, as you're going to be able to do a little bit more fine tuning, such as uh, eliminating background noise. You can also add like highs. Uh, you can maybe stop the audio um, from um, let's say reaching like the peak point, uh, you can increase or lower the, the gain. So um, I did do a video of how I do edit my audio um, in Audacity and also using Premiere Pro. Um, so a lot of these sort of techniques can be transferable to other uh, recording software as well. So if you want to check out those videos, I'm going to leave a link uh, down below in the uh, description. So uh, basically whatever um, manipulation you're able to do in hardware input one, you can do the same in hardware input two. And likewise, uh, for the virtual input, you can also make some changes uh, to that sound source as well, simply by uh, manipulating uh, the bass, uh, the mids, and the highs. So I will show you that right now. Let's just play that music once again. Okay, so that music is playing. And let me just increase it a bit. And then increase the bass. So you hear that bass going up. The mids as well. All right, and then the highs. So you can use this as a tool to brighten up um, your background music. So you can do that with your inputs as well as uh, for your uh, music in the background or your virtual input. Okay, so uh, I hope that now you're starting to see how beneficial uh, using a mixer is as it gives you more control over your sound sources. So um, right now, I just want to cover um, how you can send these different sound sources uh, to go into, let's say, OBS, or if you're recording into your DAW, your digital audio workstation. So as mentioned before, uh, these different inputs are routed to the um, either the physical output or the virtual output. So uh, right now it's being routed to my OBS. And the way how you would set that up is simply by going into your settings here, uh, then go into audio, and then you see the microphone auxiliary uh, audio here. You want to set it to the voice meter output. Why is that? Well, whatever sound you're sending into your mixer here, um, it's going to be going out through the virtual output. So whatever the output is, you want that to be the input um, for the microphone auxiliary here. So this is going to be very beneficial, especially if you're maybe streaming and you want to send different sound sources um, to your platform, whether that's Twitch or any other gaming platform uh, using OBS. Uh, you can also use this to even live stream um, on YouTube. So uh, super, super helpful. And in similar fashion, uh, if you wanted to record into your DAW, such as maybe Audacity, uh, you can see here that even Audacity is picking up the same sound. And the reason for that is because the uh, microphone input here uh, is uh, collecting sound from voice, the voice meter output, which is the virtual output here. So set that as your microphone input. And here for the playback, I like to select, um, I guess, a port that isn't active. Otherwise, if this is set to voice meter, um, you might have some echoing. Um, so that's why I keep this to an unused um, output uh, for the playback within my DAW here. And just to give you a quick example, if I wanted to uh, record this sound, you can see here that uh, Audacity is picking up the audio and it's recording. And once again, let's go here to play a little bit of music as well. And you can see that it's picking up the music. I can slip the slider up a little bit more. All right. So whether you're doing live streaming or if you're uh, doing any type of recording, maybe it's in Audacity, Reaper, or any other type of recording software that you're familiar with, uh, you can direct all of these sound sources through your virtual mixer in a similar fashion as if you were to have a physical mixer. 
All right. So uh, let's just go into more detail into the other parts of the mixing table. So uh, right here, you'll see that there's an M for either one of the inputs. This stands for mute. So if I wanted to mute my microphone, I would simply press the M here. If I wanted to mute music, I would simply press the M underneath the virtual input. So uh, music there, and then I'm gonna mute it. Okay, so here you can still see that the music is playing, but it's uh, currently in mute, and this sound isn't being routed uh, to the output. And I can similarly unmute that, and then have music playing, and then maybe just mute the hardware input. So uh, just now, uh, the hardware input for my microphone was in mute and the music was still playing. Now here you'll see that for uh, each input as well, there is an S which stands for solo. So basically what this means is if you wanted to isolate any one of these inputs, uh, just to have one input playing, then you would simply click uh, the button for that input source. So um, let's just say the music is going here in the background. I think the music paused, okay, so that's an S track. So the music is going here in the background. If I wanted to just play the music and cancel out my microphone, I would simply press S. And uh, likewise, if the music is playing and I just want my microphone to keep going, I would press the S or the solo button um, underneath where uh, my microphone is in the hardware input. So just like so. So you can still hear me, and the music here is still playing, but you're not able to hear it because the solo is um, sort of isolating uh, this sound source. All right, so um, this pretty much concludes uh, this sort of tutorial using voice meter. So hopefully after this video, you can see how useful um, using a virtual mixer is. It gives you the ability to enhance your sound quality, um, and it also gives you more control over the different sound sources that you might want to route uh, to your digital audio workstation for recording or maybe for any type of live streaming uh, that you may want to do. So um, with that being said, I just want to say thank you for watching this video. And if you did enjoy this content, then please don't hesitate to hit the like button. And if you have any questions or any comments, please don't hesitate to drop them down below as I do enjoy hearing from you, the viewer. And um, if you do enjoy the channel overall, then please don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button. Uh, so we're sort of aiming for that 1000 subscriber mark. So if you wanna help this channel grow, then by all means, uh, help us out simply by clicking uh, that subscribe button. Uh, if you wanna hear uh, more types of uh, reviews and tutorials uh, such as this one here. So uh, once again, thank you for watching and I will see you at the next video.